My coach, like always, if you want to start us with an opening statement, then we'll take questions. Welcome to March. There's not much more to say than that. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're in the NCAA or WNIT. Uh, March brings a lot of excitement. Uh, now, after today's win, uh, there's fewer and fewer teams participating in this month, and I'm just really happy that, that we're one of them. Southern Methodist is a fantastic team, as everybody knows. They're Conference USA champions. Uh, they have the player of the year in uh, Keenan Mays. And there was a point at the beginning of the game where it was Mays 8, BG 6. Uh, and she was fantastic. Uh, also, they had two other all-conference players uh, on their team. So this was a tough matchup for us uh, because they're extremely athletic. They can score inside and outside, and they have uh, plethora of defenses, and they can press as well. And we have shown that we've not handled the ball real well uh, in certain situations, but today uh, we were able to, to score and build a lead at 13 at halftime. Um, I don't think we started the first, the beginning, the first four minutes of the second half real well. Uh, played a, about a good 12 minutes in the second half, and then uh, Southern Methodist started to kick it in and uh, brought the pressure and uh, we made some free throws that to hang on, but uh, I just can't credit uh, the, the type of team enough that Southern, Meth Southern Methodist is. Um, that's a coach that, she has 401 wins, okay? I have 23. Uh, she, she is fantastic. Um, can't say enough about Fillmore uh, as well, one of their guards. I thought that was a key that she got into foul trouble early on in the first half. For, for us, and that helped us build a lead. But that's the only kid with postseason play uh, experience for Southern Methodist, and uh, she she played all the way to the end. And uh, I made sure in that handshake line that I, I told her how impressed I was of her and, and Mays in particular. Those are two just great leaders in addition to great players. But uh, with, with that said, uh, I, I'm really proud of our team. I, I thought Jillian Hafferl, everybody will look at her immediately because she made some, some tough shots, dropped in 23 for us. But uh, when you have four double-digit scorers and another kid with nine, uh, we had really balanced scoring. Uh, we went with a couple different lineups that we've been practicing with of late. Uh, and went with a three-post lineup as well. I thought that was effective for us. But uh, we were able to run uh, several different offensive series against them and, and had some success. We averaged about 63, so uh, everybody remembers SMU and the Pony Express from back in the day with football, but uh, I knew we had to put up some points today to be able to run with them because this is a talented team that we face today. But I'm just happy to represent the, the MAC as well and, and keep playing in March. After they tied it up at 57, what, uh, what got you back on track? You made another run? Did make another run. I thought Chrissy had a, a big shot, a big three in the corner. Um, I thought Lex got even more aggressive uh, during that time as well. Um, but then we were able to to limit them to we got we got a couple of consecutive stops after that. But today, uh, of all the games throughout the 33 of the season, I mean this was a game of runs uh, for sure. You know we started off the game well, then May started off the game well for them. You know, then it was another run to, to end. They were stuck on, we were stuck on 10 forever. They were stuck on 16 forever. Then we go into to halftime with a 13 point lead. And then they, the first four minutes, I mean, they cut it the 9-0 run right away against us, or 9-2 run. So uh, this game was the epitome of run. So we were fortunate to make the last one. We talked a little bit about what you guys did this week to prepare for pressure with your offense? Well, on Sunday, we had two days off. We had Friday, Saturday off. And on Sunday, um, we ran and ran and ran a lot. And it was a conditioning day. Uh, there was not much emphasis on offense or defense uh, from, from that day. But the, the next couple days after that, uh, we did emphasize taking care of the ball. But it really was more of a confidence issue, I felt like, with our team uh, than anything else. And everybody knows Central Michigan just ate us up with their pressure in that last game in the MAC tournament. And it was a 
a game where I don't want it, you take it, and it turned into hot potato. And I haven't played hot potato since second grade. So, uh, and I don't think the team even knows what that game is. So we, it had to be a confidence issue more than first and foremost in my eyes that they could handle pressure and that they could take care of it. Uh, we played a lot against each other. Um, had a couple of our men's practice squad guys uh, that are bigger and quicker guard our point guards so they could handle pressure in particular. Uh, and I thought that was a big key, but uh, we, we had to talk and get everybody believing in themselves that they could handle pressure first and foremost. And then we started to drill. When you talk about the confidence issue, were there concerns about that confidence issue in the first half when they made the run and then in the second half when they came back to tie it? No, I don't think so. I told them Southern Methodist is, I mean, they won Conference USA. It's a fantastic team. They had a 69 RPI. They were a bubble team. And there's a couple of BCS at large bids where I, I was surprised they got in. And you look at um, SMU was a bubble team. I mean, they, they really were. And uh, they could have come in here either really upset that they're playing in the WNIT and not the NCAA, or they could come into this game being, let's make a run. Uh, we're not hosting a, a home game. We've packed for a handful of games. Let's see what we can do and make some noise in this tournament. And that's a talented team that didn't want to lose. And you could tell that by the way they played all the way to the end. And by the way, Rhonda coached. Um, she, she's a fiery coach. And she makes that team go. I have a lot of respect for that program. When you talk about how your kids responded, I mean, the first half when they scored the 13 unanswered, could have packed it in, and obviously when they came back and tied the game, there's still plenty of time to win it. You know, there's an opportunity to pack it in, and neither time. I'm a big believer in if you do have a lead and other teams call at that lead, and it takes a lot of energy. It almost takes twice as much energy uh, when you're coming from behind, but they were never able to take the lead. You know, we talk, did talk about that as, at times as well, but we knew SMU would make a run, and we kept talking about four-minute battles, especially in the second half, and we made shots. Uh, there's several games where we go on stretches of four, five, six minutes without making shots, and we didn't have that today. We actually made some shots even through their, their runs. You mentioned the confidence factor that was probably never as much as anything else. Did you see that in Jillian, because she was the main ball handler tonight? Did you see her not wanting to give up the ball in Central, that she was composed a little bit more and, and playing with confidence? I thought she made better decisions tonight, and the pressure was different tonight from SMU than it was at CMU. You know, they didn't trap us uh, near as much right across half court or on the sideline or double us on the block like CMU did. Uh, but their athleticism anytime they SMU makes their money by face guarding you and denying the wings and having good ball pressure. So we had to initiate offenses more so with the dribble entry or make a pass to a post player as opposed to uh, a wing because we couldn't get catches in scoring areas. So we had to go to a couple particular offensive series that allowed us to do that. But with that said, I mean, we, we still had, I thought we took care of the ball a lot better <laughs> today against their pressure, but we still had a bunch of turnovers. Um, but uh, the turnovers at Central Michigan's game led to 40 points. The turnovers today didn't lead to that exponential growth like it did against Central. You talk about it from an X and O standpoint. Julian and Alexis talked about it from a mental standpoint of Central Michigan not being the last game, given how bad that was. Your thoughts as a coach is ending on that note, how bad that would have been for the off season. Well, I told everybody I was going to watch that game, and I put it in, and I couldn't do it. <laughs> I just wanted to, to work on what we can do, and I wanted to concentrate on SMU. And because I preached to the team all year long, it's one game at a time. Um, we'll think about that game for one day. But I wouldn't be true to myself or true to the team if I kept harping on that game or kept bringing it up in practice. So we really wanted to focus on SMU. It's a new day. Sun came up that next Friday after we lost to CMU. You know, and CMU ended up running the table on the tournament. And I wouldn't be surprised if they beat Oklahoma and Columbus and get a chance to be a 
another team like us in 2007 that goes to the Sweet 16. They're, it's a very talented team that has good chemistry this year. What about the one-day tournament? Ideally, I really thought we were going to play on Monday. Um, it's tough. Uh, it's a, a tough turnaround uh, for us, but at this time of year, a tough turnaround is better than no turnaround. Is there anything you can tell us on Miriam? She got screened pretty hard in the game, and everybody saw, saw that. Um, it was a good call. Uh, I don't think it was a flagrant one or flagrant two by any means. Uh, she just got hit with the screen, had to come out, um, came back to the bench, and I felt confident with uh, the lineup that, that we had back in there. Could she have gone back in? Yes. 